G'day, Starlo here. I'm sitting on the banks of a lovely little stream out on the western slopes of New South Wales between Bathurst and Goulburn. It's not a particularly spectacular looking bit of water. It runs through farmland, but there are definitely trout in it. And by sitting here for 10 minutes and just taking it all in, I've seen two or three rise here already. It's fairly late in the afternoon, probably only about an hour of light left. And this is when you'd expect them to start coming up and rising. There's the odd little mayfly and caddis flitting around above the water. And I've seen a couple of fish rise here. So I'm gonna sneak down and just drop a fly in. I've got a fairly large dry fly on. See how that goes. If I need to, I'll scale down. But I just love this kind of fishing. There's another one. <laughs> right there. All right, let's see if we can catch one. There's a couple of fish rising in here. A couple of them look really small, but you never know, there might be a better fish in there. I'm gonna to have to be really cautious about how I approach the water here, even though it's not particularly clear. Those fish are so aware. So I'm actually gonna stop back from the edge here a little bit and see if I can just drop my dry fly in there without getting down any further. And because it's fairly slow moving water, if I do get a take, I'm going to slow my strike down a little bit. I find in this slow stuff, sometimes you just got to give them half a second to turn with the fly. <laughs> what a beautiful afternoon. I think I'm going to have to drop it out a little bit further than that. All right, that's in a good spot. A little bit of flow out there. Got him! <laughs> oh, how was that jump? Oh, jumped him off. <laughs> that was so good. What a jump! <laughs> I may have, I may have struck just a fraction too quickly. I only pinned him lightly. I'm just blowing on this fly to dry it out. I'll do a little bit of false casting. I don't think I'll get another one in that same bit of water, but you never know. Sometimes you only need to move a short distance to find a few undisturbed trout. And sure enough, I could see another couple rising further around the bend on this same pool. I was using my twiggy little three-weight composite outfit. If you're interested in the technical details, I'll include them in the comments and description down below. Oh, look at that rise. the sun in my eyes. Got him! Oh, he's not a bad fish either. Oh no, he's not as big as I thought. <laughs> oh, he came straight up for that. That was where that one had risen before. <laughs> I love dry fly fishing. It is just so much fun. Little rainbow. No hesitation about taking that dry. And on the three weight, <laughs> Absolutely stoked. That's my first fish on dry for the new season. And that little rainbow will have been stocked in this river. There's very little in the way of natural recruitment of rainbows in this part of the world. So it'll have been stocked by one of the local acclimatization societies. All right, there's that little dry in there. I'll get that out, pop him back in. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Ooh, off like a shot. I've probably stirred this pool up a bit now. We'll go and try the next one up. There will be a mix of browns and rainbows in this water. The browns, a lot of them will be wild spawned fish. Most of the rainbows, or in fact all of the rainbows, are likely to be stocked fish. They're bred by New South Wales fisheries and they're distributed and put in these streams by members of local acclimatization societies. And my wife Joe and I are members of the Berrimah District Acclimatization Society and just a week or two ago we helped them with a day of stocking fish in waters just like this and it was absolutely fascinating. Have a look at this. On this day we met the tanker truck from Gaydon Hatchery down in Jindabyne at a park in Goulburn. Here, volunteers from several acclimatisation societies were waiting with their bins, tubs and vehicles at the ready. 
The little trout are measured out, their numbers quite accurately calculated by how much water they displace. They're then transferred into the various waiting containers already filled with water. <laughs> They're lovely healthy little fish. Pure oxygen is then pumped into the cool water in the containers. As each batch of fish is completed, the heavy duty plastic liners are secured around the oxygen hose and a final strong burst of that life-giving gas is pumped into the water and into the airspace at the top of the bag before it's tightly twisted closed, tested for leaks and then sealed with a sturdy rubber band ready for transporting to the designated release points. Joe and I had about 7,500 little rainbows in our care and we wasted no time in getting them to a cool, shady and well-protected location on the upper Kangaroo River. These fish are in really cold water at the moment. They've come from Gaden Hatchery in and it's important not to just pour them straight into this warmer water because that can shock them and kill them. So what I'm doing is just mixing a little bit of the stream water in here at a time just to balance the two up. You'll notice also that I've chosen somewhere with lots of cover, overhanging trees, places for the trout to get up under the banks and hide so that they don't get immediately predated upon by birds or whatever. Give them the best possible chance. Getting much closer in temperature now between the two lots of water. Some are quite happy to come out already. They're finding their own way out. We've got a little bit of current coming down the creek here and they're really enjoying that. It's probably a little bit more oxygenated and also a little bit cooler, but this water's reasonably cool. I'd say it's about probably 15 or 16 degrees, but the water in this bag was about 10 degrees, so it's important just to let it balance up. Almost identical now. Welcome to your new home. There's the odd dead one and you're always going to get that. But really, I'd say 99% of them are alive and healthy. There's about two and a half thousand in this bag. Alright guys and girls. They waste no time spreading out and seeking shelter too. I can't help feeling a little bit paternal about these baby trout. I hope there's no fisheries inspectors around because I'm seven and a half thousand over the bag limit and they're all undersized. Look at them going up the <laughs> creek. Yes, it seems that's a natural instinct, as is the one to seek cover under structure like these logs. Hopefully a good number of these trout will survive long enough to grow to a decent size and provide great sport and meals for lots of anglers, <laughs> maybe even for you. Meanwhile, back on the creek, the sun was sinking and the trout were rising. This is without a doubt my favorite time of the day on any trout stream. The anticipation accompanying every cast and drift of the fly is nothing short of delicious. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. Got him. <laughs> There's a couple there. Oh, down through the rapids. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Another gorgeous little rainbow. Alright mate, you wanted to go in the rapids? You go down there.
With the cool shadows now reaching out from the higher banks, the trout felt much more comfortable about regularly coming to the surface to feed. This is the golden hour. I see you, but the problem is there might be fish between me and that one. Moving cautiously and casting gently are definitely tickets to success in this situation, although there's still no guarantees. Surely over against that far bank. There's one. Small, I think. Didn't quite get it far enough over. It's frustrating when you can see them but not catch them. There we go. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh, they all pull hard on the three weight. Thought that might have been a better fish for a second. But it's just another little one. Lovely way to end my first session on dry fly for a new season. Who knows? what the rest of the season will hold. I'm sure it'll hold some bigger fish than that. Beautiful. That's a healthy bit of fish. I wonder if I can get one more before I get back to the car. I didn't get one more, but it didn't really matter. I was in my happy place, doing what I love most, and you couldn't wipe the smile off my face. Life's good. Tight lines.